So here we are over a year and a half after the initial release date, Rockstar has finally decided to toss us keyboard and mouse junkies a bone and spit out a PC version of Grand Theft Auto 5. Thank you very much. Nice of you to remember us OG gamers, huh? So what did we get? Well, okay, the graphics are gorgeous, the cars handle better than ever, and we basically got a nice hybrid of San Andreas and Grand Theft Auto 4 in the way of storyline and gameplay. And how did this all come to be? Well, let's just take a little major slack look behind the scenes. So, what should we do for the next game? Well, I think we should take some of this, and add a little bit of this, and we get this. Oh, very good, very good, yeah, excellent, excellent. And what about playable characters? Well, I think we should put in some of this. Oh yeah, they just go ape over that boys in the hood crap. And add a little bit of this. <laughs> Hold up, there was a lot of complaints about Nico and GTA 4. What the hell? They don't like Eastern Europeans? Apparently not. The fuck? Alright, so we gotta find some white guys that everybody thinks will look just as badass as those homies from the hood. Hmm, I don't know, that's gonna be a tough call. How about this guy? Hmm, a scumbucket trailer trash lowlife. Hmm, he's perfect. And how about we contrast him with a little Tony Soprano? Okay, let's throw him in the mix too. And let's make them all playable at the same time. That way they can't complain. Yeah, very good idea. Yeah, excellent. So there you go, Grand Theft Auto 5 with three different playable characters all in the same game. Kind of weird, but hey, okay, why not? I'm hip. And speaking of hip, beat Franklin, your first playable character. And hey, let's reheat a little GTA San Andreas and serve up a heap and helping of African American vernacular language. Yo, nigga. Hey, nigga. Sup, nigga. Ain't this about a bitch? Shut up, nigga. Nigga, you ain't nothing about a nigga, nigga. Whoa, you can't say that on TV. Actually, I think you can, but let's not go there and just say we did. Moving right along. Just before you, you start thinking too much no, no, and I'm asking yourself, is this really Wait, cool or just over-the-top black exploitation? Enter your second playable character, Michael, a retired gangster in a witness protection program with a punk-ass bitch for a son, a punk-ass bitch for a daughter, and well, what the hell? Ain't broke? Don't fix it. A punk-ass bitch for a wife! But she's cool. She does yoga. Well, that's what she calls it. And so you start digging into all the complexities of living in a big mansion in the hills while wondering what kind of balls your wife is really batting around during her tennis lessons and taking care of daddy's little girl while you plan a big jewel heist to pay for a little renovation job you took on that turned out to be for the wrong client. Oops. Well, hey, that was fun. And just when you thought the game had cleaned up its act a little bit, it's off to the desert to meet Trevor. And Trevor, well, he has some anger management issues. Whoops, wait a minute, wrong clip. Here we go, okay, and finally we get into some gunplay, lots of gunplay, oh boy. And just when you start taking a liking to Trevor in a kind of Charles Marilyn Manson sort of way, the game starts mixing in all the playable characters in the same missions, and then sometimes sends you urgent signals to switch to a certain character. Okay, let's switch. What? Wait a minute, this was what was so urgent? Well, I guess when you gotta go, you gotta go, but come on. The fuck is wrong with you? I'm kind of thinking the same thing. Okay, whatever, I can roll with that. Only problem is, I'm a grown man and I'm struggling to think how I'm going to explain to my wife that all this depravity and debauchery is just a video game. You're not playing that filthy game anymore! Oh please, honey, it's so much fun! It's just a game! It's degenerate slime bucket putretainment! Give me that! Sweetheart, please! Give me that game or you're not getting laid for the next year! Give it here! No! Aww! <laughs> Okay, I admit it. It's a hell of a lot of fun. Strike that. Grand Theft Auto 5 is a hell of a lot of fucking fun. It's so much fun. Seriously. Of course, you already know all this because everybody and their monkey's uncle and their third cousin twice removed has already played the game to death for the past 19 months because nobody in their right mind relies on a personal computer to play video games anymore, right? So what about the PC version? Well, being a hardcore diehard go down with a sinking ship PC gamer myself, I had the pleasure, and I use that term loosely, of recently purchasing and installing the PC version of Grand Theft Auto V. Well, actually, there was a mistake. You see, after buying the Steam version and downloading and installing the colossal 65 mega terabytes of game files, I realized they had sent me the wrong game. Instead of Grand Theft Auto V, I got Grand Mess Offline V. Yes, pardon me for being a little old-fashioned and remembering a time when playing a new video game involved the following simple procedure. 1. Go to the store and buy a video game in a box. 2. Bring the box to video game home. 3. Open the box, stick the DVD into your computer and install it. 4. 
play the game. That's it? Yes, that's it. Remember those days? Yeah, those were the days, my friend, and now they've come to an end. Yeah, nowadays playing a PC game involves signing away your firstborn child into a mega corporate video game digital rights management system and plugging a one inch thick carbon fiber coaxial cable into the back of your neck, Matrix style, and the other end into a Steam slash Rockstar slash Social Club online game server and mainlining the game's data directly into your veins. What's that? You object to that because you find that procedure a little invasive? You want to play the game in <gasps> offline mode? Eh, sorry, no can't do. Uh-oh. Looks like the Social Club program that comes as a mandatory installation along with the PC version of GTA 5 has thrown up some kind of roadblock when I try to play the game offline. What is this, a glitch? Or is this the way the game was designed? Well, let's spend half a day trying to figure this out. Okay, I got it figured out now. That's just wonderful. It turns out it was just a fucking glitch. Lucky for me, I'm the total geekoid descendant of the marriage between Steve Urkel and Bill Gates from the 19th century, who's perfectly comfortable with entering DOS commands from the Windows command prompt in order to do a windsock reset. But Slack, I don't know any about Windows DOS grandfather computer type in a command crap. <laughs> ain't that a bitch. Well, I guess he ain't playing the game. Of course, if you manage to get past that and actually start playing the game, you'll once again get punished for the unforgivable sin of disobeying the first commandment of 21st century video gaming. Thou shalt not attempt to play a video game offline! And discover that the in-game stock market is completely borked. What happens? Clicking to buy a certain stock will not select that stock, but rather some other stock. Wait a minute, is that for every stock? Yep, every stock. And you're serious? This is just an offline thing? Yep. And apparently this time, rumor has it that it's not a glitch. Yep, that's right, it's not a glitch. This was purposely made like this to annoy anybody who pirated the game. Because apparently, if you pirated the game, you're most likely to be playing offline. <laughs> but wait a minute, I paid 70 bucks for this game. How come I'm getting punished? How do you explain that, Rockstar? Well, yes, we're very sorry about that. We know it's a shotgun approach. There's bound to be some collateral damage. Collateral damage, huh? <laughs> okay. It's a good thing that somebody took the trouble to post on reddit.com a complete table to show which stocks to click on to get which stocks to actually show up on your buy screen. Try to ignore the fact that you're relying on video game pirates to get it fixed for your legitimate copy of the game. And what about buying safe houses offline? Well, after Googling for a solid hour, I came up with a firm conclusion that you definitely, probably, most likely cannot buy a safe house in the game while playing in offline mode. Maybe. <laughs> okay, I know I can't. But hey, at this point, I don't really care. I'm so tired of Googling and plowing through reams of semi-literate, zero-punctuation, elite gamers speak on video game forums and trying to fiddle around and tweak every computer setting known in the history of PC gaming. You know what? I'm done. So the game's a little busted. A little bit broke? Don't fix it. That's my new model. So Slack, are you going to do a walkthrough of Grand Theft Auto V? I didn't say that. You're not going to do a walkthrough of Grand Theft Auto V? I didn't say that either. No, dude, he's going to do a walkthrough of Witcher 3. Uh-uh, I have it on good authority that Slack's next walkthrough is Shadow of Mortar. Witcher 3, Shadow of Mortar. Witcher 3, Shadow of Mortar. Grand Theft Auto V, Shadow of Mortar. Dishonored. Witcher 3, Shadow of Mortar. Alrighty then, while you guys are figuring all that out, I'd like to say thank you very much for watching, and if you thought this video was remotely entertaining, hey, don't forget to give the old Slackster a thumbs up. Yeah. See you next video.